Hey, what's going on guys? This is Root from NoShell.com, and today we're going to be looking at some more Python. Uh, just last tutorial we looked at some data types, and now we want to learn how to operate on these data types and be able to manipulate them. So, let's get idle started up, and let's get to programming and all that good stuff. <laughs> so, when you operate or you, you change a value of a, of a certain data type, what you're doing is you're using an operator on it. Now, these operators can be the symbol if you look at this table here. You have the addition, you have subtraction, you have multiplication, and these are usually only things you would be doing with numbers, but you can sort of manipulate this tactic with strings, too. So, if we hop on over to our Python shell, we can try it out. Uh, I typed out an example here, like a little action on the right hand side of the table so 2 plus 4 if we just type that in we get 6 idle almost kind of works as a calculator or something but it, that just makes sense if, if you're running a computer things should be able to be calculated and computed and in a programming language that's exactly what happens everything, everything, every expression that you type in will be evaluated the way it should be so let's hop on over to subtraction though 6 minus 4 is going to get you 2 that same thing that we had right up here so obviously we're we're right <laughs> so 3 times 3 when you're looking at multiplication you're going to have 9 right there you go now we have division which is a little bit more of an interesting thing if you have 10 minus 2 i'm sorry 10 sub 10 divided by 2 you get 5 now what if you did 10 divided by 3 you get 3 but we all know 10 divided by 3 isn't exactly 3. If you do if you do that, you have 3, and then you have 6, and you have 9. But you don't have 10. 10 is just like this little extraneous number right off on the side. That doesn't make any sense. So what you're seeing here is a case of integer division. So the way this works is you're passing in two integers. If you typed in uh, 10 divided by 3, exactly that same thing, you have those two integers, you're getting 10 divided by 3, so you're going to get an integer as a quotient. Now, this might not be what you're looking for. You might want to have that real thing. So what you should do is try and convert these integers to floats, or decimal point numbers. And the way you do that is just give them a decimal point. 10.0 divided by 3.1, 3.0. 3.3333333, whatever you, whatever you would expect to see in that answer. And that's really the only case that you might have to make up for it, because you are going to have to deal with integer division and fixing that in case you ever need anything like that. But that does bring another interesting case, because division is so quirky, I feel like is the best word for it, you have the modulus operator, which will return the remainder of a division. So if you had that same scenario, 10 divided by 3, you're going to have 3, and you're going to have that 6, you're going to multiply it again, you get 9, because 3 times 3 is 9, except you have 10, and then because that's what you're going to have there, and you that difference between the 10 and the 9 is 1. If you kept going, you would get to 11 if you were multiplying, I'm sorry, you would get to 12 if you were multiplying 3 by 4. So now, but we're going to pass in that 10 as what we're working with. So if we had 10 divided by 3.0, we have that exact same thing, we're using the float, but let's say we don't want that. Let's say we want to get the remainder of that of that evaluation. So let's see, 10 modulus 3 you're going to get 1 because you have that 10 but the only th the closest thing that 3 can get to it is 9 you get that 1 so there's your remainder and that's really all you need to know it's kind of interesting cuz you can use that a lot if you're trying to factor numbers if you're trying to write yourself a little like factoring program to see how many like what numbers are factors of this let's say 1 is a factor of 20 let's say 2 is a factor of 20 cuz you have times 10 then you have let's say 4 and then you have 5 so 1 times 20 is 20, 2 times 10 is 20, 4 times 5 is 20, and you would get that, what you you could have the user do is input a number, let's say input they input 20, and you could start counting up until 20, and then every time you get a new number, you could divide it, you could divide 20 by that new number. And if you're, if the remainder is 0, you can tell that it's a factor. If, you, if the remainder isn't 0, it's obviously not going to divide correct, it's not going to like work out correctly because it's not a factor. So there you go. You get a list of all the things that you need to know and boom. <laughs>
But uh, that was a little tangent. I'm sorry for rambling like that. If you look back on the table here, we have floor division. Floor division is interesting. What it does is it'll divide, and then it will round the answer to the floor. So in our scenario, 10.3... I'm sorry, 10.0 divided by 3. We don't need these decimal points anymore. Because we're working with integers. You get 3. I actually haven't tested that out, but that would make sense because you have these things here. So yeah, we should, I should use those decimal points to be able to prove to you guys what I'm saying here. Because you get 3.0 rather than 3.3333333. So, it's, it's rounding down. That's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm using my hands here, but you can't see me, so. <laughs> so, yeah, that's really all you need to know about with uh, numbers and integers and floats. You can obviously do different things. Let's say 10.25 times maybe 2.5. You can multiply with floats, you can add with floats, you can subtract with floats. You can do all these things with different data types that you've learned about in the last video. Now, strings are a whole different story. It's kind of really interesting. And I'm going to get more in depth with this later on, but I'll introduce to you some like some of the some of the basic concepts. So if you have a string, let's say this is a string and let's just work with that. Well, you can do an idle you can hit Alt P and it'll get back your previous command. That's what that P stands for. So that'll make things a little bit easier for you. Uh, and then let's add to it. Actually, let's multiply. Let's try and like re repeat the string. Let's. This is a string times three. This is a string. This is a string. This is a string. There you go. And that could be useful, I suppose. But it's more. In, it's going to be more important to be able to add things to the string. Now. This is interesting because if you're trying to like display output of something that the user already inputted, so if you wanted to say, if you had the user type in something, like if you if you had wrote out to the screen, please type in something, and the user typed in something, and you wanted to display it back to him, you would be like, you typed in, and then something. That's That might be a little bit of a vague explanation, but I feel like you're going to want to ca concatenate, and that's the term for it, that's the terminology, you would concatenate onto a string. Concatenate is adding onto a string. So you have the string here, and let's concatenate onto it, or add, this piece was concatenated. And now you have uh, one string, but it's both of them put together. So now this is an interesting case if you're trying to add, let's say, a number to it. This is going to throw an error at you, but don't be afraid, because we have we have a solution. We have the technology. So, <laughs> you can't concatenate a string object and an integer object. So the way we would go about this is... Let me bring that back down here. You can use string, a function, that will convert whatever you pass to it to a string. So concatenate... Concatenating. Wow. I had that, I had that whole thing wrong the entire time. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Concatenating is adding onto a string, and you're adding the string value of 30. So it'll just be, if we close that out for a moment, you'll have 30. That's exactly what you're going to be re returned with. But since you're... Let's paste that in. Concatenating is adding onto a string, plus string 30. Concatenating is onto a string, 30. Good. That's exactly what we wanted to see. No errors, and it works. Now, you can subtract with strings, I suppose. <laughs> I've actually, I don't think I've tried this. If you typed in, this is a string, and we were saying to subtract is, would it get rid of all the is? No, that wouldn't make sense. Okay. But yeah, this, kind, this is kind of exactly what I want to show you guys, though. Being able to experiment and try things and see what works and what doesn't is part of gaining a better understanding, in my opinion. If you're able to just toy around for a little bit, see what you can do, see what things that you can change, see what things you can manipulate and make different, that's part of building something new. And when you're operating on, on data in Python, you're going to be able to change things in lots of ways, whether it be using a function to change things, whether you're going to be adding something at the core minimum. So, yeah, that's really all I have to offer for you guys today. Um, be sure you toy around with this a little bit, see what you can do, uh, experiment with different data types, experiment with different operators, do a little research if you feel like you're brave, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for watching, I hope this helped, and I will see you in the next tutorial.